Our second reading of scripture is taken from the gospel according to Luke, and this is from chapter 4, and I'll be reading the first 13 verses. So hear now the word of God. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. And then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. And this ends the reading of Scripture. May God bless us with understanding upon hearing God's word. Amen. Have any of you ever seen or heard about the show, I think it's CBS, that's, uh, maybe it's Sundays, I'm not sure, uh, it's called God Friended Me? Okay, and, and, I, and I think if I get the premise right, it's about this man who is suddenly, well, he finds a relationship with God on, a, on, a social, on social networking. He, he gets friended by, by, he's an atheist, okay, he's an, okay, but his dad's a preacher, well, those things happen. And, uh, he, and so anyway, he gets friended, however, by, you know, by, by God. Okay. Well, there you go. Social networking to somehow be connected to God. But here's a question for you. If I were to ask you this, where does God live? Now, you might say, some might say, what, in heaven? Some might say, among us. Some might say, within us. True. But would you believe Kearney, New Jersey. Would you? God lives in Ke Well, at least that's what you might think if you drove by a certain trucking terminal in that city, at least until 2004, before that company ceased operations. You see, on the side of its building was a huge sign that said, Welcome to the home of G period, O period, D period, God. The name of the company was Guaranteed Overnight Delivery. G period, O period, D period, God. And the company painted this on the side of their trucks in huge letters. Even their uh, mud flaps had G period, O period, D period on their trucks. And for years, those in that particular area of the country would see these tractor trailers and cause the drivers to do double takes and wonder, does God deliver? <laughs> well, ask that question to the author of Psalm 91 that Gary shared with us. Does God deliver? And the answer would be, well, yeah, God does deliver. But it's not anything that you can load on a shipping pallet and expect from Amazon. Those who love me, says the Lord, I will deliver. Now, folks, 
carrying that cardboard box in from your front porch may actually give you a little tinge of excitement, but it is nothing, nothing compared to that larger goal of spiritual deliverance. And it's that that only God, with no periods in between, God can do. And what this psalm, again, that Gary shared, reminds us is that the Almighty God is actually in the delivery business. And what God delivers, or better yet, who God delivers isn't merchandise. God delivers people. Psalmist said, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. The psalmist here is focused on delivery, not, not to somewhere, but delivery from something, and that something is suffering and hurts and pains. I mean, it seems pretty clear-cut when you hear it. It says, you know, believe in God and God will keep you safe. And that's a promise with seemingly huge appeal to it. It's a little, it's a little guardian angel type of thing there. You know, it's a little Clarence, like, you know, uh, the angel and it's a wonderful life type of thing going on. But the problem is, the closest thing that you get to guardian angels in the Bible is this psalm. And if you read this psalm closely, you'll see that it says absolutely nothing about God assigning each of us a personal spiritual guide. But interestingly enough, it's this psalm that is actually the basis for one of the temptations that I shared with you this morning in the Gospel of Luke. The devil takes Jesus up to what? The pinnacle, highest point, the pinnacle of the temple and has him stand there and look down on all these people strolling or these tiny little things. If you've ever been really high, you know, you know, the little tiny little toys on the ground, all these tiny little people running around. And he says, okay, Jesus, if you are indeed the Son of God, then throw yourself down from here. And then goes on to quote the psalm. He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And what does Jesus say? Don't put the Lord your God to the Jesus rejects the offer of safety. He rejects the offer of protection. And he chooses the way of God, which is for him that slow and painful walk to the cross. And there's no doubt that when Jesus hears this, there's no doubt that this psalm was actually on his mind. Those who love me, I will deliver. And we know Jesus would suffer. But we also know the story continues. And that is God would bring him through the suffering, through the pain. And then out onto the other side to this thing we know of as Easter. Easter. As resurrection. Which when now when we look back at then at, at the 91st Psalm, it's really not some kind of little shallow picture of a God who never allows anything bad to happen to us. It's not about escaping those everyday hurts and pains of life. It's actually something far more deep. And far more wonderful. It is a celebration of that powerful truth that as long as we are surrounded by the love of God and we are surrounded by the love of God, then deliverance is assured and it is on time. 
Now, there's, not, there's, there's none of us here that have to, have to think very deeply to recall stories in our lives of people we have known, maybe ourselves, who have hurt, who have been in pain, who have gone through the storms of undeserved suffering. We know them, their family members, their friends. Some have died before their time with cancer, heart disease, accidents, suicide, overdose. And still others have watched their dreams that they've had along the way, their dreams of happiness, slip away because the economy went south, or their business failed, or a divorce. And you cannot say of people like these, you cannot say, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, no guardian angels showed up in the nick of time so that they would not so much as dash their foot against a stone. It did not happen. Now, was that because God somehow had it in for them? Was it, was it that they had done something terrible and deserved this punishment? Was it because maybe they just didn't love God enough? There's, there's suffering that is in our world. Suffering that, yes, sometimes people do bring among the, upon themselves, but there's also a type of suffering and hurt and pain that has absolutely no explanation. None. It's random. The tornado hits. Sadly, it just is. And so when we know that, it is... We may even look at this Psalm 91 and ask about, you know, about God's deliverance. Is this, just, is this just some kind of a pleasant fantasy to distract the attention of the, from the naive, cold, and cruel world around us? No. No, it is not. God intervenes in troubling times. Sometimes... God changes our circumstances. Sometimes our circumstances get, get changed in unexpected ways. And when that happens, we say it is a wonderful gift. But we can never count on such graceful outcomes. Because there are those other times. Maybe sometimes more too frequent. When God leaves our outward circumstances unchanged. But instead, changes us and changes our inner selves and helps us to discover reservoirs of faith that we never even knew we had. And when that happens, it is indeed a miracle. It is a miracle. For who would have thought at the beginning of such a season of hurt and suffering that we would have what it takes to get through it. And yet we did. When we journey with God through the bleak, through the uncharted landscapes of pains and hurts in our lives, physical, emotional, we frequently find that the only way that we can do it is how? One step at a time. And yet we find that as we place that foot, one foot, in front of the other, sometimes it's in looking back, we find that God guides our steps. And together, God and us, we get through it. And very often, we do emerge on the other side spiritual healthier, spiritually healthier when we, than when we began our journey. And what we find and what we continue to find is that we have been and we continue to be delivered and delivered on time. All glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.